Okay, hi everyone. Thanks for uh, joining our Contour project update. Um, let's do a couple of quick intros. So my name is Steve Chris. I'm a staff engineer at VMware and I'm a Contour maintainer. Uh, my name is Nigel. I am a senior developer advocate at Intuit and community manager for Contour. Uh, so what is Contour? Uh, it's an open source ingress controller. Um, it's a control plane for Envoy. How many of you all have used Contour before? Cool. Uh, if you've used Contour and you don't work at VMware, like, let me, oh, sick. All right, cool. Um, uh, for those of you who are not familiar with what Contour does, what Ingress does, in short, uh, it helps you get traffic from out into the world, uh, from in the world into your Kubernetes clusters. Um, it's not a new project. Uh, it's been incubating here with the CNCF since 2020, um, and it is currently used in production at scale at VMware and many other places. Um, so it supports uh, HTTP proxy, the CRD that was introduced by this project, as well as uh, Ingress and the Gateway API as that uh, grows. Uh, oh yeah, a little bit about where it came from. Yeah, so let's, let's take a quick look at the timeline of the project. So um, the project was first open sourced uh, out of Heptio back in 2017, so uh, coming up on six years ago. Um, 2019, the uh, V1 of the project was released, and this included um, a V1 of the HTTP proxy CRD. Um, 2020 was when we were, we were donated to the CNCF at the incubate, incubating level, so we've been a CNCF project for, uh, for three years now. Um, 2021, we had the, the first Contour release with Gateway API support, so um, Contour maintainers have been involved in, in the Gateway API project uh, since the inception of that project, and actually one of our emeritus maintainers, Nick Young, was a founder, a co-founder of Gateway API, so um, yeah, 2021, our first release with Gateway API support, and we've, we've continued to develop that uh, through today. Um, later in 2021, we moved to, uh, from a monthly release cycle to a quarterly release cycle, so new releases every three months. Uh, we also moved to uh, supporting the, the previous three minor releases, so each minor release series now gets nine months of support, uh, which includes critical uh, bug fixes and CVE fixes. Um, and then fast forward to today, so coming up in, in just another week or two in early May, uh, we're going to have uh, v1.25 out, and that will include a, a bunch of new features that we'll look at uh, in a few minutes. So yeah, let's take a, take a look at the kind of the typical deployment architecture for Contour. Um, so Contour uh, is an in-cluster ingress controller. It's deployed into your Kubernetes cluster. Uh, it's comprised of two components, right? So you have the control plane, which is really Contour itself, um, and then you have the data plane, which is Envoy proxy. Um, and typically Envoy is deployed into your cluster as a daemon set, so you have a replica running on each node. Um, you can also use a deployment for Envoy, um, depending on kind of the scale of your cluster and, and your, uh, your needs for your installation there. Um, and then the, the contour component, the control plane component, is really responsible for sitting in the cluster and watching all of your Kubernetes API resources. So HTTP proxy, gateway API, ingress for your routing rules, um, and then also services, endpoints, secrets, uh, for the additional information that's needed to, to perform routing. Um, and then contour is, is translating that information into Envoy configuration, uh, into the XDS protocol, um, and sending that out to all the envoys in your cluster. Uh, and then Envoy is, is really the data plane, the data path component of this. And so typically it's, it's exposed to outside the cluster uh, through an L4 load balancer. You have a single load balancer that's routing traffic from outside of your cluster uh, into the fleet of Envoy proxies. Um, there are a number of other ways that, that you can expose Envoy to the outside world. You can, you can use node port services, host ports, host networking, but uh, the most typical um, way to do this is through a load balancer. And then so that, that traffic is coming in uh, to the Envoy proxies, and then based on the configuration that uh, Contour has provided to Envoy, Envoy is making routing decisions and, and forwarding that traffic to the appropriate backend. Um, I, like Nigel said, typically based on, you know, path, header, query parameter uh, properties and, and various other things. Okay, so why might you choose Contour? Uh, well, first of all, it is based on Envoy. How many of you were at the Envoy video yesterday, the movie? Was it good? How was it? Yeah? Yeah? Awesome. Mostly ringing endorsement. 
the people watching this online, they don't know any different. Um, so uh, Envoy Proxy is the reverse proxy that Consort implements as the data path. Um, it is a well-established project uh, that came out of Lyft. Um, if you went to the video yesterday, then you know quite a lot about it. But essentially, it is a very widely used cloud-native open source project for doing all of the things that you would need to do for traffic inside of uh, Kubernetes. It's performant, it's observable, it's amazing. Um, and yeah, you might use Contour because it uh, is like this control layer for Envoy and does a really good job of uh, getting ingress and handling networking for your clusters. Some of the advanced features. Yeah, so Contour is, uh, over time, exposed more and more of, of the Envoy feature set, uh, particularly in the, the kind of L7 HTTP space. So, um, you know, if you have simple use cases around just doing path-based routing or, or simple routing, Contour is great. But if you have uh, more advanced kind of uh, API gateway type features that you require, um, Contour can, can kind of grow in complexity with you as well. So. Um, you know, any number of things from uh, cookie rewrites to WebSocket support, gRPC and gRPC web support. Um, we have uh, support Envoy's local and global rate limiting, uh, external authorization. Um, so, so many different features, and I'm not going to go into all of them right now, but, uh, but yeah, many, many different features that you can use. And we, we continue to expose more and more of the Envoy uh, API surface, uh, particularly, like I said, around L7 traffic routing. So if you do have a need that uh, Contour doesn't already support, we'd love to have you show up in the community and, and let us know and uh, see if we can get it into the project. Um, yeah, another, another great thing about Contour is that it does support multiple configuration APIs. So, um, you know, we, we really are able to meet users where they are. We know that, that everyone has kind of their own preferences and, and their own requirements around how to configure routing rules. Um, and so, you know, first and foremost is Contour's HTTP proxy CRD. Um, and this, this one exposes all the features of Contour. Um, it's, it's developed kind of in, in collaboration with Contour, in concert with Contour, and so exposes all the features. Um, it's stable, as I mentioned earlier, it's, it's V1, and so you have backwards compatibility guarantees, so you don't need to worry about um, breaking changes in the API from release to release. Um, and yeah, it's great, great for simple use cases. Um, if, if you look at some of the, the basic examples, it's very uh, kind of concise and, and expressive for, uh, for simple use cases, but can expand to, uh, to give you access to all of those advanced features. Um, we also support gateway API. So as I mentioned, we've been involved with this project for, uh, for quite a while. And for those of you who aren't familiar, I assume most of you are, but um, this is really kind of the next generation uh, upstream service networking API um, that's been developed out of SIG networking. And um, yeah, it's, it's currently in beta. Uh, most of the core uh, L7 resources are in beta, um, rapidly approaching GA later this year. And so we're looking forward to that. And it, it comes with a, uh, an ever-growing set of conformance tests um, so that any implementation of Gateway API can run these conformance tests and ensure that they're uh, implementing the API in the right way. And so we have, we've been tracking those conformance tests. We've actually been uh, contributing many of those tests as well. And uh, we, we have a conformant implementation at this point. And as the API continues to progress to, uh, to GA, we'll, we'll continue to keep up with those conformance tests. And um, yeah, gateway APIs are a really great API. You know, it's role oriented, so um, kind of differentiates between platform operator roles, uh, application operator roles. And so uh, if that's important to you, it's a, it's a great API to use. It has a really good breadth of features um, with extensibility baked into the API. So the core API maybe doesn't have uh, quite all of the features that, that HTTP proxy does, but there are extension points for implementations to add their own uh, additional features. So uh, definitely a great choice. Um, and then Contour also supports ingress, right? Everyone uh, needs to support ingress. Um, this isn't something we're putting a lot of uh, additional development effort into at this point. We uh, support the, the core spec and some of the common annotations and have uh, some contour specific annotations as well. Um, for us, this is you know primarily kind of a migration path. Um, if you're using another ingress controller and are interested in contour uh, to be able to easily migrate um, and then uh, potentially look at a, uh, a different API from there. Yeah, so again, we want to emphasize that it, you can use this right now. 
It is production ready, people are running it. It is amazing. Um, it's used at scale um, and the last three minor releases, uh, I see a lot of the emails come in where folks are reporting, hey, we found a vulnerability and seeing that get patched uh, for your like long running versions of Kubernetes or of Contour. So yeah, if you are interested, please dig in. Um, we also want to emphasize uh, the community for Contour. The community is, uh, in my opinion, a big part of what makes the Contour community, or what makes Contour great, is like having a community around it. So uh, I also want to thank you all for showing up here and being a part of our community. If you would like, you can pat yourselves on the back or give yourself a, some applause. No? It's not that early. Come on, give me something. Give me something. Okay. Okay, yes. Thank you all for showing up to this talk, for uh, hearing about us uh, give you updates on Contour. Um, if you want to connect more with the community, there are a lot of ways to do that. Uh, we have them listed here on the slide, including joining us in the Kate's uh, Slack workspace. Um, we also have this Google group here, which is where we'll be emailing out a lot of the major updates, um, anything that's coming up uh, when we're having community meetings or we're going to be rolling out uh, new updates or bug fixes, patch releases come out. Um, you'll want to join the email list there. And then we have various other ways for you to connect with us. You can see our amazing metrics of how people are getting involved. Um, but we definitely want to emphasize the growth of the community. Um, and one of the things that we're working towards is uh, actively seeking more folks to be maintainers on the Contour project. Um, and it's, I think for a lot of people, uh, maintainership sounds like a daunting task uh, and unapproachable, at least it did for me. Um, and we want to emphasize that it is a path that we are outlining and there are many, many ways to get involved. Um, we would love for Contour to graduate and part of one of the things we're looking for as a health metric is more companies involved in driving the project. Um, we have roles outlined in our community slash governance stock. So in the Contour GitHub project, uh, there's a repo for community and outlined we have uh, community roles. Um, and you can see that uh, one of the biggest things that uh, the easiest ways to get inv uh, involved is by reviewing PRs. You, uh, engineers are an opinionated bunch um, and we would love to hear your opinions in a nice and loving way uh, for all of the features that folks are wanting to add or the issues that people are having. Um, you know, our golden rule with community is, you know, just try to be the person that you wish you had. You know, who would you feel safe coming to with your issues or with your, your PRs and be that person uh, for someone else and help them on their development journey. So right now, today, you can go review PRs. We had a great Contrib Fest session yesterday. Were any of you there for that? I know Tara was one of our other maintainers. Anyone else? Yeah, well, we had a bunch of uh, new contributors coming and submitting PRs to Contour. It was amazing to see that community grow and we need you all uh, to help us out with uh, uh, some uh, reviews as well as uh, uh, community support in the Slack channel. Um, benefits of maintainership, helping to drive the project, uh, also helping to see the project be stable, longevity, grow, get bigger. Um, and uh, we want to see more folks take an interest in helping to drive the project. Our community meeting cadence, we changed up a bit. We found that it was overwhelming, uh, what we were going through in the last year. And so we took a bit of a break and we're bringing them back. And the way they're structured now is to happen a couple weeks after a release to give you time to get hands on, as well as to get at the beginning of the release cycle for the next release. So if you have ideas that are coming into it that you wanna bring in the next console release, you can come to the community meeting give us design docs, give us feedback, anything that you're looking for so that we can incorporate those as we are in the engineering cycle for getting the next version of Contour out. Um, we had a very successful ad hoc meeting in February that came about because some engineers at some places were like, hey, we haven't seen a community meeting in a while. We have things we want to discuss. And it ended up being very good, lively discussion. And uh, Steve is going to talk a bit about some of the uh, some of the design docs got submitted from the community and some of the features that have been added to Contour very recently from community input. Um, so yeah, two weeks post-release, additionally available ad hoc. 
Um, and then we're also starting an initiative to get educational materials for new users. Uh, as you all are well, are well aware, networking is very hard um, and people often get lost. And so we want to have a place for people to come to learn networking in a holistic way that's gonna get them from I don't know how ports work to the CNI to now networking in Kubernetes to configuring Envoy and Contour and being networking superstars. So as we're developing that educational material, we wanna hear from you, like what are some of the things um, that were helpful for you as you were on your learning journey that we can put out as some content for folks to get up to speed on uh, learning uh, networking and Kubernetes. Um, so. These are some questions to kind of spur your thinking. Uh, if you have any feedback, I'm open to hearing, or I, I welcome <laughs> you sharing that with me so that we can work together to make some great material for folks trying to get involved in networking in the contour. All right, so we wanted to highlight some, uh, some recent work that has uh, been merged into Contour or is, is soon to be merged and uh, will be in the upcoming release. Um, and so I have three features to highlight and uh, what's really exciting about these features is that they were all community driven. So these were um, things that, that uh, some of them were in our backlog already, um, some of them were new ideas, but um, these were things where community members who had a particular need um, showed up to the community uh, worked on design docs and then worked on implementation and, and really saw these features through to completion. And so within the span of, of one release cycle, um, three months, we were able to get these features designed, implemented, uh, and into the release. So the first one we've got here um, is tracing support uh, with open telemetry. Um, so this is a, a long-standing feature request in Contour. I think it, before we closed the issue, it was actually the fourth oldest issue in the repository, um, number 399 or something like that. So uh, super excited to, to finally see this come to Contour. Um, we had been uh, recently kind of waiting for Envoy's open telemetry support to land and to be uh, ready to use. We wanted to, to rally around open telemetry as a standard here. Um, and so the uh, contributor who worked on this was Yangi93. Um, they, once this uh, supported merged and Envoy, they showed up and uh, wrote up a design doc. Uh, we went through some, some rounds of feedback and got that design doc merged and then uh, got an implementation up. And so, yeah, so you can see here that on the left, um, tracing is configured uh, within the contour configuration file or a contour configuration CRD if you're using that. So you have uh, kind of a single global tracing configuration for uh, your contour instance. Um, you would deploy an open telemetry collector within your cluster and then reference that through an extension service, which if you've used uh, external authorization or rate limiting, you're, you're familiar with extension services. Um, and then some additional parameters um, around tags that are added to your traces uh, and various other things. And then uh, on the right here, I just uh, grabbed an example of a, a tracing span that's emitted in kind of the logging format. So um, you can see that uh, you get the request log, you get uh, various information about the host, the URL, um, any, any sort of headers or parameters and uh, custom tags are added here as well. So again, super excited to see this land. We really appreciate uh, Yangi93 showing up and doing this work and uh, hopefully this is something that, that you all can use. Next up uh, was a feature which was uh, external authorization support for um, HTTP virtual hosts, so non-TLS terminated virtual hosts. So um, Contour has supported uh, external authorization for TLS virtual hosts for, for quite a while now. We've had that support, but um, because of some technical challenges around how uh, kind of filter chains are, are configured in Envoy, um, we didn't have support for uh, configuring external auth for, for plain HTTP virtual hosts. And so uh, a contributor, a, a relatively new contributor, Clayton Gonsalves, um, had a need for this feature. Uh, they wanted to, to be able to do external authorization for, uh, for, for HTTP virtual hosts. And so again, showed up, uh, and talked with the maintainers about uh, kind of an idea for an implementation path and, and got a design in place um, and, and was able to get an implementation in and this will ship in 1.25. And so the, the way this is implemented is that um, with, with TLS virtual hosts, you can configure an external authorization server on the, on the root HTTP proxy for the virtual host. Um, for plain HTTP virtual hosts, what we do is we define a single global external authorization server. And so again, this is defined in the uh, contour configuration file or the, uh, the contour configuration CRD. 
Um, and so this, this global external authorization server then becomes the, the default server that's used for all of your virtual hosts. And so by default it applies both to, to plain HTTP virtual hosts as well as TLS virtual hosts. Now if you want to override the external uh, auth server, so use a different server for a particular TLS v host, uh, you can still, still specify those settings in an individual HTTP proxy and, and the proxy level settings will take uh, precedence over the global ones. Uh, you're also able to disable external auth for any particular uh, root HTTP proxy. Um, so yeah, again, super excited to have this land. It kind of fills a gap in terms of uh, support for this feature. Uh, and we're looking forward to, to having this be used going forward. And then finally, uh, we're, we're just about to land uh, support for uh, IP allow lists and block lists, um, IP filtering. And so this work was contributed by uh, E Cordell. Um, again, went through the design process. This was something we had had in the backlog for quite a while, but hadn't been able to, uh, to have rise to the top of the priority list, but E Cordell had a need for this, and so uh, showed up and, and put the work in and got it, uh, got it implemented. So um, this can be configured at uh, either the virtual host or the route level um, with, with route level configuration taking precedence over uh, virtual host. Um, you can specify either an allow policy or a deny policy. And so an allow policy will allow uh, only those IPs that are, that are specified in the policy. Uh, deny policy will deny any IPs that are specified in the policy. And so you can, you can see on the right here um, kind of the Envoy configuration uh, for the RBAC filter that's emitted here. Um, so yeah, just wanted to uh, kind of recap and say that we were, we were super excited to have all of these contributors show up. Um, it's, this is really kind of what makes Contour um, great and unique, I think, is when folks show up who have needs and, and help us drive the, the project forward. There's only um, so much that kind of the core maintainer and core contributor team can do, but if we have folks show up and, and kind of help out with their own needs, uh, we can get more and more functionality into the project. All right, so uh, we want to take a look at the roadmap and, and what we have um, on the docket for the future of the project. Um, so first up um, is extensibility, and this is really around uh, kind of data plane, data path extensibility. So we have heard for, for a long time that folks are interested in having some way to do kind of arbitrary uh, modifications as requests are going through the data path. And so we've had requests for Lua scripting, for WASM, for um, now the external processing filter that Envoy supports, um, and, and various other forms of extension, of extensibility. Um, We've been a little bit hesitant to merge this into the project because it does open, open up kind of a, a whole can of worms um, and potentially enables users to, to kind of get themselves into trouble making modifications to requests that, um, that can have adverse impact on the data path. But um, we've heard loud and clear that, that folks are really interested in this and need this to be able to support their production use cases. So we're taking a, a, a new look at this. Um, it, it seems like the community is kind of rallying around the external processing filter that Envoy supports um, as a, a good kind of first path to go uh, down for extensibility and that uh, the implementation of it would look very similar to um, kind of the extension service and external service uh, pattern that we use for external auth, for rate limiting, and now for tracing. So it's a, it's a well-established design pattern in Contour. So we hope that we can uh, get to a design doc, get, get that in place, and um, at, at least get some proofs of concept done and, uh, and hopefully merge some support for this later in the year. Um, next up, we're, as I mentioned earlier, we're a conformant gateway API implementation and we want to keep up with those, uh, those conformance tests and the API spec um, as it approaches GA. Um, this is, is definitely important to us to support and so we will, we will continue to work on that. Um, next up is, is kind of improving our efficiency at scale. So Contour is already run in, at large scale and, and probably many of you are running it in, in large clusters. Um, we do think we can make some, some additional improvements um, just in terms of optimizing uh, memory and CPU utilization uh, so that it can be kind of as, as efficient as possible. So uh, we have some ideas here for, uh, for improvements and we'll look to work on that later in the year. 
Um, finally, we want to uh, improve the observability of the control plane. So Envoy itself has really great observability and, and on the data path you uh, are able to take advantage of all the metrics and statistics it, it emits. And Contour, the control plane, has some of that as well, but uh, we think we can make some improvements and so when issues pop up, um, having that observability in the control plane itself is, is really helpful for operability. So um, definitely want to make a push here to, uh, to ensure that Contour is, is kind of as easy to operate as possible and gives you the most insight into what's going on. Um, and finally, yeah, come, come join us and help build out the roadmap. We're, we're definitely open to uh, feature requests, ideas for uh, where to take the project, and we would love to get input from folks who are users. Um, so yeah. Come, come join us and help to find the roadmap. Yeah, again, please get involved. Uh, you can uh, go deeper with uh, Contour Governance and Maintainership, come to our community meetings, keep contributing, um, and let us know how we can support you. So for the folks that are users now that want to step up into a more contributor role, want to give back to the community, one way to do that is by just letting us know, like tell us, hey, I have an interest in this project um, and I could use a little support. I think that one of the things that I wish that uh, engineers would have told me uh, was that uh, a lot of times features aren't implemented uh, in open source projects, not because they're like super hard, but generally people have different time and priorities. So there's a lot of stuff that we can do to support engineers on their journey to contributing to open source. So please just let us know how we can help you. Um, again, here's how you can find us on the internet, like and subscribe, um, and yeah, uh, let us know if you have any questions. Uh, yeah, we appreciate you all coming so much. We have a small token of our appreciation here uh, at center stage if you want to come and grab one. Um, but yeah, uh, who has questions? Nobody, come on. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I, I couldn't totally hear. The question was, do we work together with the W3? W3C. Uh, we don't work with them, no. Um, we're, you know, use Envoy as the data, as the data path, as the, the proxy, and so um, we're relying on Envoy's kind of HTTP implementation. Another question, another question. It's Friday, the conference is almost over, y'all about to go home, you got an opportunity to ask questions, put us on the spot. Y'all not gonna take advantage of that, for real? It's like that, okay, okay. Going once, going twice, <laughs> going three times, oh, I'm just kidding. Um, well, uh, <laughs> thank you so much, uh, you can, leave feedback uh, for us here on, oh, we have a question. Yes, please, my bad. Back. <laughs> See, I should have kept counting. Yeah. Um, how are you aligned with the Envoy Gateway project? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. So I, I think a year ago um, that project was announced and uh, Contour maintainers, the Contour team were, were part of kind of the founding of that project. And so we, we helped bootstrap it and get it off the ground. Um, at this point, you know, we have, we have limited capacity as maintainers and so we're primarily focusing on, on the needs of our Contour users um, and, and focus, we see that there's a lot of demand for improvements to the HTTP proxy CRD. Um, so that's, that's where our focus is right now. Um, we think, you know, long term as the, the Envoy Gateway project evolves um, and really reaches kind of a stable, mature uh, production state. Um, that, you know, there's potentially a, a possibility to leverage it to kind of replace Contour's gateway API implementation. Um, but I don't think we're there right now. You know, we've been, we've been working on Contour's implementation for two years and we feel pretty good about where it is. Um, it's stable and we know that we have folks using it in, in production environments. So um, I think, uh, you know, still to be determined exactly how, uh, how we end up leveraging that project. But we're super excited to, to see it continue to be developed and, and to see the community grow around it. Thank you. Great question. Y'all gonna make me count again? 
No? Are we good? All right. I'll put the QR code back up. Thank you all so much for coming. Uh, we'll see you around. Cheers.